Good afternoon. We have all utilized the power of remote sensing. Well, what exactly is it and how does it work? Today we have uh, Luca Dallora uh, from uh, UNICEF who will introduce the power of remote sensing and UNICEF's UNICEF role in supporting humanitarian action, um, including and related to UNDEX deployments following major disasters. This is the second episode of UNDEX Talks. Welcome. Uh, it's produced by the Field Coordination Support Section uh, of OCHA in Geneva. Greetings from Geneva again. Uh, my name is Peter Muller. I'm your host for this episode of UNDEC Talks. Uh, this lecture series, as you may know, is aimed to provide access to the extensive knowledge in the uh, UNDEC network and the UNDEC system uh, and beyond to reinforce learning and information exchange and experiences um, in humanitarian action. As I said, today's topic we hope is extremely interesting for you. Today, look at the Laura, the Laurel, sorry, will talk about the power of remote sensing and how uh, the UNICEF's operational rapid mapping service is supporting international humanitarian action with satellite imagery analysis. Lucas serves as the acting head of the training and capacity development and operational disaster mapping teams of UNITAS Operational Satellite Applications Program, also known as UNICEF. He's also a visiting lecturer at the University of Copenhagen and the University of Geneva. Uh, Luca has coordinated, designed, and implemented more than 50 training courses and workshops worldwide. He has also worked for OCHA as a second lead uh, by providing analytical and coordination support to the rapid assessment cell uh, here in Geneva, working very closely together also with Marcus Elton, who you may have seen in the first on that talk, talking about assessment and analysis. Please note that Luca will be available for questions uh, after the presentation, so we'll hold those and we'll uh, and keep them in mind as you listen and we'll come back to that at the end. So, Luca, how are you doing? Welcome to Geneva, welcome to us. Thank you very much, Peter. It's a real, real pleasure for me to be here and uh, thanks for having me, having, having me here today mm. with you. Well, it's definitely an honor for us to have you. Uh, remote sensing is a very relevant, but I guess particularly for non-technical people, also complex concept. What can you tell us about the state of the art in terms of uh, programs that are run? How, how many satellites are there actually? Well, over the last few years, Earth observation technology and geospatial Earth observation and geospatial information technology has rapidly developed, and is also now being called. Uh, enable technology to get the benefits uh, it gives to the to number of different application domains, including energy response and disaster risk management. Mm -hmm. um, as of today, we have uh, we have um, since 1957, when the first satellite was launched by the, the Russians, uh, we have now uh, been launched more than 6,000 satellites uh, since then to the present. We have now currently more than 4,000. Uh, orbiting, operating orbiting satellites, uh, recording and acquiring val valuable information uh, about what is, what is actually happening on the ground, on the Earth. Uh, in addition to this, there is a, a growing, growing uh, awareness about the benefit of geospatial information technology and Earth observations, uh, also uh, aided by um, recent advances of this, of this technology. Especially we have now uh, more and more non-experts let's say, are now aware about this technology, and then this is aided by the recent advance, advancements and developments um, of um, services and platforms to access data. For example, we have now a great access to uh, web and uh, mobile GIS. We have uh, uh, Google Earth, right. Google Maps. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, global positioning systems, and we have also UAV technology that provides us you know, access uh, and uh, to uh, information and then uh, uh, geospatial information uh, data. In addition, we have now uh, um, we have now also big data uh, cloud services that are now accessible, and then uh, they also allow to analyze a huge amount of uh, of um, satellite imagery uh, terabytes, let's say, rapidly fast. 
Yeah. So we are now really technology from our side to to exploit and to take the most of it. Right. And as well in, in, in disaster management or in, in human connection. Great. So so maybe for for those of the audience who are less familiar, how would how would you define define remote sensing? Well, by definition, uh, remote sensing is the science of uh, acquiring or obtaining information about objects yeah. or uh, any object from a distance. Typically, it can be our the human eyes, let's say, but uh, more specifically, our aircraft, aircraft, and uh, and satellites. Yeah. Um, orbiting, as I shown in the slides, orbiting Earth observation satellites acquire uh, images through digital sensors that can be optical or radar, and that measure and record the amount of electromagnetic energy reflected or emitted from from, um, from the Earth's surface into well-defined uh, wavelengths, or what we call it, uh, spectral bands. Mm -hmm. um, especially for uh, satellite images, therefore, what is the product, uh, or what is uh, been acquired by satellites, is, uh, is therefore a digital, represent a digital representation of the physical, so the shape, the size, but also the spectral characteristic of any object on Earth. Mm -hmm. We can definitely use satellite imagery uh, for many different purposes and application domain, as I mentioned earlier, but then specifically for disaster management and image response, we can now get access to different types of imagery and products. It can be, it can be really uh, medium or low the satellite uh, images that are record uh, really large areas, let's say, get information about large areas, but we can also obtain, you know, Really detailed information using various resolution. Then we have also we can also use that depending on the type of sensor radar. For example, they can they can acquire information in all weather condition also mm -hmm. overnight. And then we have also optical satellites that can provide us uh, more information using uh, specific bands about vegetation, environmental changes, uh, and other sort of parameters. We have also through the satellites we can uh, obtain uh, digital elevation models, but also any other sort of, uh, you know, real-time precipitation, soil, weather condition mm -hmm. uh, information. Right. And, and, and so more concretely, how, how is remote sensing and, and uh, I guess specifically uh, UNICEF's uh, rapid mapping services actually supporting emergency response operations when, when you have all this type of the data and imagery, uh, but following an emergency, following a, a major disaster? Sure. Just to, just to set a bit the stage now here. That what is important uh, to mention when it comes into uh, our, our our business, let's say, that there is really uh, providing support from since the very early stages of the disasters. That those is where you know we have uh, the uncertainty, uncertainty, and then especially in this situation when a disaster happens, uh, it's, most of the time is characterized by really limited, incomplete, and often often contradictory information mm -hmm. related to, for example, the geographic extent mm -hmm. of, uh, of um, the, the affected areas. Uh, numbers and location of affected people. How many people are in need of, of humanitarian assistance? What is the level of damage to housing, infrastructure, and physical facilities, but also the capacity and the response of local, national, international, international uh, organizations, lo local and national authorities, and also what is the level of coordination? Of, from you know from the international community point of view, or also at the, at the, within the national uh, government. So basically, UNOSAT uh, is a um, is a, a satellite application program of the United Nations Institute for Training Research, operational since 2000, and, and uh, especially the rapid mapping service operational since 2003, and uh, and provides 24 hours seven uh, seven days a week. Uh, satellite image analysis during humanitarian emergencies, either for natural disasters, for human natural disaster, or conflict situations. Mm -hmm. um, a team of experienced anal analysts ensure timely delivery of satellite imagery, the right maps or analysis, uh, including situation reports and GIS data, according to needs of uh, UN agencies and humanitarian actors. Uh, UNOSAT uh, benefits. Uh, from a variety of sources for to acquire satellite imagery, free and open source, commercial vendors, international space charter, and major disasters, uh, but also in kind donation from uh, space agencies and other uh, partners. So how uh, it works? Typically, typically situations for which universal rapid mapping services activated include the floods, earthquakes, storms, landslides, volcanoes, oil spills, 
but also refugee and ADP camp mapping and, conf and conflict damage assessment or uh, need of to provide some situation analysis. But specifically now we will be focusing on uh, natural disasters. Mm -hmm. The service, uh, the service in the history of charge and then um, it's very charge for the UN agencies and humanitarian entities opera operating in line with the UN policies and then can be requested 24 hours a day via offline and email. Right. So basically the, the, the users can request to this uh, you know, offline or via email you know, to get analysis of a specific area. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So well, well, I guess we'll come to, to how that links to uh, to UNDRAC right. because we of course uh, are one of those clients. But um, in terms of types of analysis and, and, and products, uh, what what does UNICEF normally uh, produce, or what do your analysts uh, produce to support the different phases? I guess as well as in the first phase, maybe second phase. Can you tell me a bit about? Perfect? Sure, sure. And this will be this slide. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, following, you know, especially following major disaster events, OCHA is definitely amongst one of the first UN agency to contact UNICEF and, uh, and request for satellite imagery to support operational planning coordination mm -hmm. uh, of the international military assistance. So as shown here, we have, uh, you know, many of you, they, they recognize this is, a, is a, in, the, in, the, in the upper part, is basically the humanitarian program cycle with the different uh, defined uh, phases. Phase one uh, is where there's a conduct rate analysis, phase one where we have all these type of assessment, and then we, we, we move to to uh, to other phases of um, emergency response. But then you know we uh, UNOSAT once is activated, uh, once we receive a request from uh, a UN sister agencies or from a member state, we will uh, by looking at the availability of satellite imagery, and then we have you know specifically given a certain timeline to be produce specific products and uh, specific analysis. Um, we are now in the process of finalizing, you know, a catalog because uh, basically to better, uh, you know, to increase the outreach and especially to let, uh, let our users know about what we can get and by when. We are now uh, finalizing a full catalog of the special products that will some that uh, will describe basically uh, the different satellite analysis, uh, the right product that can be provided, and also uh, maps and reports uh, according to the type of events whether it's a, a volcano or an earthquake or uh, a flood, and uh, uh, given a certain timeline, what can be produced within 24 hours, what can be produced within 72 hours, and what can be produced uh, within, you know, um, throughout the, the, the image response phase. Yeah, okay. Now, that, that's very uh, relevant for us, of course, is in London where we do that stuff in the first 24 or 72 hours, but then beyond as well. Do you have like a, um, uh, an example of a, like, like, a, like a field operation? Yeah, maybe something that I forgot to add, if, I, if you will allow me, is about, you know, that uh, of course, what is also important mm -hmm. is that, uh, you know, the distribution analysis is not only, you know, the way of acquiring, you know, mm -hmm. what we do at, at the rapid mapping service, not only acquiring, you know, the pre-disaster images, but it's also, it's basically using and ingesting in our analysis, mm -hmm. really important, you know, uh, you know, as a, all the agency doing secondary data review, but then also ingesting, you know, media governmental reports following a disaster event, but also ingesting you know, what are the, all the common operational uh, data sets, you know, the codes and the, and the thoughts. Those are really, you know, is a key to, you know, to use both satellite imagery and, uh, and um, you know, um, baseline data in a GIS format to produce, you know, weekly and timely analysis. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, mm -hmm. you know, about the, you know, case, case example, you know, UNOSAT, uh, over, let's say, in 2016, and then the first semester of 2017 has been supported by OCHA and uh, other humanitarian actors in more than uh, 40 uh, disaster events. Um, something that maybe can be relevant to mention here uh, today for our discussion uh, can be the the, the Hurricane Matthew mm -hmm. that um, basically uh, category five hurricane that um, in October 2016. Uh, left a path of destruction from uh, the Caribbean up to the, the southeast, the south, the south yeah. east coast of the U.S. Uh, most affected countries was a, was a, was Haiti, where Matthew left 1.4 million uh, Haitians in need of uh, immediate humanitarian assistance 
incurs nearly $2 billion in, in damage and loss. So basically, in the, as, a, as, a, as a shown here, you know, we have a, I just uh, prepared the slides to produce, um, you know, to show a bit, you know, what is the timeline of the production was, uh, was, was, was provided. OCHA, we've been activated by OCHA uh, in the very beginning, when, right before, uh, you know, the hurricane approached and made landfall in, uh, in uh, the southern western uh, part of Haiti, and then we triggered intervention of speech charter. Mm -hmm. So basically, intervention of speech charter is a mechanism that uh, where that um, you know specialized uh, agencies like uh, UNOSAT might uh, activate on behalf of the UN uh, to uh, get access to uh, satellite images yeah. uh, in case of major disaster. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, the charter is uh, is made by all the 20, more than 23 space agencies around the world that uh, contribute and provide imagery for free to yeah. specialized users. So basically, with the, once the mechanism was activated, you know, we got access to the satellite imagery, and then we start producing analysis. Mm -hmm. So to debate a bit more and to provide a bit more details, what we could or can actually be done in a, in a since you know within a, you know uh, image response framework, and then with the certain in the certain timeline, I can just show you, for example, in the in the case of Matthew, mm -hmm. um, in the very beginning, you know, we were able because the, we have satellite the you know, recording, you know, the actual uh, path of the cyclone, the hurricane, and then, you know, we can also have models that can forecast what is the, you yeah. know, the, 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 the possible or the probable path, where it's going. Because you uh, have the... Yeah, the forecast. The and the faults, and you have the baseline data. Yeah, we have in addition, we have the baseline, yeah. but based also on understanding, you know, that yeah. the, the hurricane is going to that direction, and my next, uh, in, the, in the next couple of days, uh, eat or approach these islands or uh, these areas. So we were able already to try to estimate what would be the number of people affected yeah. by, by the, the, the hurricane. So basically that was done by UNOSAT in the very beginning before the, the hurricane made the landfall. But once, you know, on the 4th of October, when the, the, the yeah. landfall made landfall in, a, in, a, in, a, in a Haiti, we uh, immediately um, started doing analysis and providing, you know, uh, and providing estimation of population uh, exposed yeah. to um, sustained wind speed areas because this is one of the major causes of damages from an hurricane, uh, you know, the damages from the, the high speed wind, but also uh, people living in, uh, in areas where uh, accumulated, rain, accumulated rainfall was, uh, was really high, yeah. and also people living in flat beach areas. So basically, we provided this, uh, these estimates to OCHA that, that they used in for the for the pressure field. Yeah. Okay. So, so this again literally was used the the, the first uh, the first pressure field that came out of the yes five exactly. days or so pardon five days no this is even before I think it was three or four days mm -hmm. now I don't remember exactly but then the pressure field was issued it was issued you know two mm -hmm. or three days mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and so these figures actually came from from mm -hmm. Unicef yes yeah. especially the, the the population exposure you know mm -hmm. the population exposure then you know when uh, you know very high resolution uh, satellite uh, images, very high resolution images were, were available, we came, became available through the charter, we start analyzing and doing a detailed really damage assessment. Mm -hmm. As is shown here, you know, we were able from, by comparing, you know, the post, the pre, the, sorry, the pre-disaster image with the post-disaster image, we are able to compare and to look, wow, this building, you know, after the, this event, and specifically, you know, has been damaged. So basically, we, we, we looked into individual buildings and to assess the level of damage. In, in this particular case, it was only to, to assess whether the building was damaged or not. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, another sort of analysis was really relevant for the humanitarian community was basically, you know, when, especially in rural areas, um, uh, Haitians, you know, got the, the, the house destroyed. And also, they basically, uh, you know, were just waiting and then they, they removed all the items, you know, uh, outside their, mm -hmm. their place. And so, we also look at the location where people were looking and waiting for. Uh, for assistance. Mm -hmm. So basically, we identify location of spontaneous people gathering inside. And then, so this, this kind of images and this kind of analysis is after how many days can you have that? So basically, the, this is as soon as the, you know, I was very resolution of imagery is available, but uh, it's uh, between two or three days, or can be done also if you're really lucky in, in the 24 hours. Yeah. But then, you know, it's a specific analysis, but then to have the, you know, to analyze the entire area of interest, the entire affected areas might take a bit more time. Yeah. But then it depends really on when the, the imagery is available or when the image 
is, uh, is actually uh, acquired by the satellite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, another important, um, uh, you know, support and analysis that we were able to provide at the time was that by looking looking at the uh, accessibility, looking at the you know humanitarian access, and specifically uh, we were able at the same you know comparing the pre and the post imagery, see whether you know there were the, the road uh, network was still functioning, there were road obstacles, or as you can see here, you know clearly we we we, we see that uh, you know uh, part of this road is gone. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in basically, as you can see, you know, this was the, is the southern west, uh, you know, part of uh, Haiti, mm -hmm. uh, the sud and then, uh, you know, the, the department. Mm -hmm. And all the one highlighted, the one area one and two and three are the areas analyzed by UNOSAT, mm -hmm. where we really carry, carry out this uh, detailed damage analysis. So basically, we assessed, uh, we assessed 40,000, more than 40,500 building damage, as damage. More than 1,500 uh, locations where people were waiting, you know, uh, assistance, and then more than 500 uh, locations where uh, with, the, with the roads and, uh, and the transportation network was uh, was not functioning right. or in some some some, right. some so so very operational, operational that as well. Yeah, absolutely. But then of course, then it's a matter of you know we analyze huge areas, you know. And then, you know, uh, again here, you know, we can see that UNOSAT was not only the only right. satellite mapping agency right. providing, you know, satellite imagery support, but then, you know, we were, there were also other agencies contributing to, to this uh, type of work, like, you know, the, the, the European, you know, Commission, the Copernicus, mm -hmm. but also the U.S., uh, you know, National Special Intelligence. And then you can see that, you know, those are the blue areas are the ones that covered by UNOSAT with analysis. The, the yellows were the one covered by Copernicus, and then the red covered by the, the U.S. National Geospatial Ge Intelligence Agency. So basically, the, the, and you uh, coordinate amongst these agencies. About, uh, yes, this is a really good question because this requires also uh, a good level of coordination to mm -hmm. avoid duplication, and that is the, the reason why UNOSAP is, uh, is uh, quite active. Many, many of you might be already familiar with the, with the GDEX, the Global Disaster Alert Coordination System, which is the, you know, uh, a platform managed by, uh, by OCHA and then uh, UNOSAT and also uh, the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, especially the Joint Research Center, you know, as you know, they are uh, providing, you know, uh, real-time alerts uh, at global level, you know, what would happen in terms of natural disasters, earthquake floods and so on. Uh, OCHA is managing, you know, the part that is for um, uh, emergency responders, that is the Vista right. And cool. then UNOSAT is, uh, is actually, uh, you know, providing, you know, uh, <coughs> good efforts and good coordination support in amongst the different, you know, um, uh, satellite um, mapping group in, in coordination. So if you click here, maybe, maybe I think some of you may be really familiar with this, but then there is this tab, data maps, if you click on that one, there is the satellite mapping coordination. So basically, you can get access to a really uh, interesting tool. We, we call it SMCS, Satellite Mapping Coordination System, uh, which is a, plat a platform that, uh, that for, coordinate, for coordinating satellite image analysis and mapping following major disasters for the benefit of the GDAX stakeholders, but also for the wider humanitarian community. SMCS is basically looks uh, it's really interactive. As you can see, it's a map that you can zoom in and zoom out. And then you can, uh, in, uh, you, you basically uh, can select different functionalities, can provide different type of information. One information is basically when a disaster is active, which is the basically the reason activation ongoing. You can get information about who is doing what. It's a sort of three uh, W uh, for satellite imaging. So who does what and where in terms of satellite image analysis. Uh, this is something that you know we coordinate with the other, with the Copernicus and the other um, um, satellite um, satellite mapping group. We get this information, so we know who does what, mm -hmm. and then we provide this to the to the to, to the GDAX stakeholders basically. Uh, and then we have also the satellite mapping overview reports that are available. So basically, we update on on weekly basis. We we provide to the to the GDAX stakeholders. Uh, some what is relevant in terms of uh, satellite imagery that is happening you know, in the different countries. Uh, and then we have also the live OMS where it's a platform to, to share uh, all the satellite derived uh, analysis in terms of GIS data. 
I show you quickly, for example, you know, when they, in, 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 you know, you can see, you know, as, a, as, a, as I mentioned earlier, earlier, you know, there were different areas of interest covered by different mapping groups, but then, you know, you can get even more information. For example, what type of analysis is, you know, by whom, if, whether I know, and then what type of uh, image is, uh, is actually used for analysis, what type of analysis will be produced, and when will be delivered. Yeah. So basically, this is, is, a, is, a, is a great information, and then that supports also the assessments, because through the assessment, somebody that has to, uh, you know, plan an assessment in the field knows that a certain area will be covered by satellite image analysis. Um, yes, I think. And then there is the, the, sorry, the last point was the, the live one map. Mm -hmm. This is important because the rumor is also when there are different satellite mapping group, group, groups uh, involved, providing an analysis, we combine this into uh, a unique common database, let's say, and then you know, we provide a platform that can share all this data and information mm -hmm. with, uh, with, the, with the user community. Yeah. So they can ingest, for example, like map action. Mm -hmm. We have a really, uh, you know, uh, collaboration with map action through the, you know, for, for example, the UNDAC, during the UNDAC deployment, uh, where we provide, you know, map action and all, they can access, you know, our uh, satellite drive, you know, back to the, so they can then ingest in their own, in their own, uh, you know, uh, mapping uh, uh, efforts and, 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 uh, and then they are providing, you know, using the fields. Yeah. Uh, and map action, of course, is, uh, is, is part of the index. And so this is where these things come together. Yeah, you, you, you showed me uh, the other day, you showed me uh, this on the, on, on, on the GDEX. And I, I must admit, I wasn't aware of it. It was a while since I looked. So it was really uh, very useful, I think. Um, Okay, um, thanks for sharing this also with the audience. Um, really great. Uh, any, before we go to the questions, any remaining pieces of advice, key points you want to make? Yeah, well, uh, yes, uh, I would love to. But one, one thing is that I especially you know, uh, being in this business and working with the US for more than, than 20, 20 years now, there was a lot of interest about this technology, but then, you know, uh, I think that this, 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 you know, we have to be clear on what you know you can get, what is possible to achieve. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, technology is not an issue. There are great advances, uh, advancement in these technologies, great developments. But then, of course, it might still be really difficult to, you know, when a major disaster event happens, you know, to cover a large area of uh, of uh, affected countries. You know, for example, Nepal. You know, mm -hmm. it was. Uh, uh, I don't know how many people got that. I don't, the, 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 the record the figures, but then you know, it's uh, you know, it's considered you know huge uh, area that needs to be analyzed. So basically, of course, remote sensing, satellite image analysis can support humanitarian operation, but they cannot maybe in few, only a few days cover uh, the entire affected area. So that's why the, 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 the field assessment, initial rapid assessment, um, you know, more uh, sectorial assessment mm -hmm. done by uh, humanitarian actors uh, and then even edges in the field remain you know, key in, in supporting you know, um, humanitarian you know, affected people and then in supporting energy response. So basically it's the way to use this technology that is that is should be really uh, important uh, that everybody knows. Basically this should be used as a tool where you can get you know, uh, specific information over, over, over specific areas. For example, you know, you have a uh, uh, in the case of Nepal, you know, remember that there was a deployed as assessment coordinator uh, in, in Gorka. The, the initially, you know, the tension was in the big city, in Kathmandu, mm -hmm. was the level of damage. Mm -hmm. But the problem in the end was the up in the valleys, mm -hmm. you know, in remote areas. Mm -hmm. So those areas are hard to reach. Yeah. So that is where probably satellite image analysis can support, yeah. you know, can support in providing what is the situation, what are the damage, the damage what is the damage pattern in the, yeah. in the rural and the urban areas. So basically using it as a sample. To understand what is the level of damage, and then uh, and this is, a, is, a, is, a, is one consideration, and the other consideration is of course uh, to to ensure that you know that, that there is a collaboration that we can get access to uh, baseline or or that is another thing that is really important. But then it's not now it is time to discuss today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I think that, that this complementarity is, is, of course, where we as, as Andak and Ocha are working on working with you guys, working with Map Action, working with, with, with the REACH initiative and all that. So I guess uh, uh, to sort of uh, making these collaborations predictable in, 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 uh, for a rapid response and having 
SOPs will, will be relevant. Great. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, uh, viewers, I hope that you find this interesting. We have uh, about uh, 20 minutes uh, or more even for questions. Um, so let's see who wants to have a question. I, I'm just going to see if we can. Oh, we can't control that. But uh, I think it's Olga who will come first with the question. Olga, go ahead. Thank you, Peter. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, thank you for your question. So, what should the UNICEF team expect from UNICEF? And what does the UNICEF expect from UNICEF members? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question, Olga. Should I maybe should I I'm gonna ask Peter, do you think I should just answer right now or uh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh what we what, what UNIDAC should expect. Basically with UNIDAC we have uh, you know, it's been now uh, several years and then we all in general we have uh, an agreement and now we are specifically with UNIDAC we are um defining, you know, uh, really an SOP. SOP to uh, ensure that we provide, you know, the right um you know Support at the right time. Mm -hmm. Basically, one of the major, uh, you know, um, the major, the major things for, about this uh, is collaboration with the UNDAC is that uh, UNOSAT is as soon as they receive an alert M zero and M one when uh, you know there is uh, basically deployment in the deployments we are automatically uh, activated. So UNOSAT, you know, and UNDAC uh, um, teams can already count on uh, our support. Um, done from remote from Geneva, of course, with the satellite image analysis. Mm -hmm. So then, depending on the operational requirements, depending on the, on the type of disasters, then we it's a, it's a, it's a, but we, we we can see what is more relevant and what is needed. But basically, since the M M M1 uh, let's say um, you know uh, phase, we are uh, now automatically activated. We look into the availability and uh, of satellite imagery over specific areas, affected areas, or in the country, and then we are, uh, you have, a, you know, the rapid mapping service is uh, um, ready to support, right. you know, the uh, UNDAC. Uh, the thing is what we are expecting from UNDAC. At the time, you know, that this is the other important thing. What we are expecting from UNDAC is basically to have, a, you know, good communication channel to be informed about what are the operational requirements, what type of analysis is more relevant. Mm -hmm. So it's not waiting, you know, for you know, some as it happened sometime in the past, you know, we were providing you know, analysis where you know people didn't know how to use or what to make, how to make use of it. But now we like to be a bit more, you know, um, a bit more, let's say, aware about you know people in the field should let us know what is to be needed, so we can then produce and provide them, you know, what is absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We have a slide on that. Or ah, yeah, on maybe that? I had the yes, because for for the this is explain a bit, you know, what what that way is gonna be, it's gonna work. But this is the SAP that are still in progress. Mm -hmm. But basically, you know, the satellite mapping, uh, you know, satellite mapping service is activated as soon as there is an M1, and then you know we have uh, uh, also through the virtual also we will inform the virtual also because the virtual also there is the option where I don't know if maybe they're here, you know, you can request a map. Right. So basically, we are now putting it okay. also with the SMCS. We are now improving the SMCS to create a platform where, you know, UNDAC, but also other humanitarian actors in the field can request and then share, can request satellite imagery uh, analysis to, to UNOSAT, but they can also share, you know, information about, you know, uh, reports or whatever is happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Uh, okay, so the question is <laughs> from Daniel Kersberg. Could you please elaborate more on the analysis methods? Are these based on human effort or automated analysis? I guess this is a, an interesting question. We get this fancy, I mean, I, me as a user, we get this fancy uh, uh, satellite imagery that has the layers and all that. Who does it? Is it a human effort or is it an automated effort? It's a good question. Yeah, that, that, uh, and then I can, I can tell you that, um, you know, there are, you know, of course, research, uh, academic issues that have developed, you know, kind of interesting, you know, methodology to perform satellite image analysis with, uh, you know, with more in automatic way. You know, there are algorithms for object-oriented or you know, specific software that they can, you know, 
but then no, unfortunately those are not yet operational. So basically uh, we are, you know, our, our role in you know, the use of the market service is really to, uh, to be operational 100% and provide, you know, uh, timely information to, um, to people in the field. Uh, so basically we don't have either, you know, if there is a technology or an algorithm that, you know, can be fully tested and then is operational or we do it, you know, uh, you know, with the traditional methods, for example, damage analysis. Yes, it's uh, hard to believe, but then, you know, we, we use the pre post disaster mm -hmm. image, and then, you know, by visual interpretation, we have, a, you know, a group of great an analysts in Geneva. Sometimes we also we do collaboration with other uh, institutes, but we have analysts that they look into, you know, building by building. They look into with their eyes whether you know, there is something happening yeah. on that or something visible on the image. So basically, let's say that we, when we, you know, in the more long term or in other sort of projects, we absolutely try to ingest, you know, the new uh, methodologies or uh, new algorithms because, uh, but now for, uh, you know, if you have 24 hours to deliver something, there is not yet a solution ready. So, yeah. Yeah. so we do it by this <laughs> basically. Oh, yeah. So it's a, but it, it's a mix. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a software, you know, we have software, yeah. and we have an uh, experience yeah. analysis that do the things, but there's no button that you click right. and then yeah. everything is done. Yeah. Yeah. And how many people are there in, in your team, actually? Yeah, the, in the UNICEF, there's, uh, we can count on 30, uh, let's say, 30 experts. Uh, the disaster mapping has uh, around, let's say, uh, five to seven, eight people that can be mobilized mm. in case of major disasters. Yeah. But then, you know, we can also, then we have also the conflict uh, team that is more into the in more long term, uh, like the serial damage assessment. So then depending, we can scale it up uh, based on the, on, the, on the type of event right. and the analysis that we need to provide to our end users. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, very good. Um, I have uh, on my uh, laptop here, Alois is coming through. So he had a similar question about uh, man-made or, or computer analysis, so we covered that. The next question is um, whether you're using volunteers to analyze, uh, for instance, houses in, in Sudan. Uh, and the second question from Alois is, uh, what is it, crowd info by UN assigned, whether that's useful. So volunteers? Uh, and the use of uh, UN assigned. You have to maybe explain what UN assigned is. Yes, uh, sure. Uh, basically, the damage assessment, we, we, we did an attempt. I remember, you know, when, uh, and then, you know, we are really happy. For example, after 2010, Haiti earthquake, we established this collaboration uh, with a collaboration agreement with, uh, with the European Commission, with the Joint Research Center, uh, but also with the World Bank in doing, you know, a collaborative damage assessment. Uh, was also involved the university at the time of Zurich, and then of course the time was also when uh, you know OSM was the, was the, was the, was providing you know was studying you know providing you know um, you know assistance and support. Uh, that's it's something that we, we we are always happy to do it uh, to be honest. But when there is a huge disaster event, mm -hmm. uh, most of the uh, disasters over the last few years are disasters that we in a way or another we were able to manage. So what we are expecting from the others is that ask the others to provide us really and to ingest, you know, for example, we are uh, ingesting OSM, you know, OSM when uh, is, uh, is available, building footprints is really a useful, you know, piece of information that we can use to start doing our damage analysis. Mm -hmm. Because then we can already have, you know, what are in the location of the building. So, uh, but then, you know, when it comes into collaborative damage assessment, it's something that needs to be, uh, that are coordinated, you know, we need to require a certain level of coordination, and uh, I would say that it's more probably relevant when there is a huge or a really big disaster event. Yeah. But then, you know, this is something that, you know, you must happen over in the past, and we are always happy to do it. Regarding the UNSI, UNSI mm -hmm. is um, a cross-sourcing application, it's like a mobile application, it's free of track, can be, can be downloaded from uh, our website. And it's an interesting tool because the, I mean, there are many others, but what is interesting on your sign is that, uh, is that uh, you can download this basically on your smartphone. Uh, these, uh, and then you can collect, you know, if you're in the field, you can collect pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also insert captions, and then soon you can also get some videos. But this information for us is vital because uh, from remote and from satellite, you know, we, we can use whatever information in real time from the field for validating and to really improve our analysis. The, the sign, you know, 
Of course, it's not like Kubo uh, that I know is done for doing the assessment, but you know, and also the, capa the, the, the capability of, of transferring, you know, good quality photo with really low, low bandwidth. So basically, it's a really tool that when we are uh, activated, you know, especially in the human situation, we can try to understand what is the actual situation on the ground and how to start analyzing, you know, uh, the, the, the satellite image. Or else, uh, can be used, for example, say, what is the typical damage to buildings? What are we expecting now? Because from above, you know, we might see, you know, the image might not be that clear, but then from the field, we can see this is what, what you know, it's a pancake, you know, mm -hmm. collapse, the type of damage that we might expect to find on the, on the image. Yeah. So I think it's useful, of course. Yeah. Yes. Great. Okay, we had a question from Jose Rodriguez, which is uh, this one. Uh, uh, are these satellites available to combat forest fires? And if so, how? Sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There are, you know, greater now, there are greater initiatives. There are absolutely, you know, there are satellites that are now they have a, um, a thermic, um, you know, thermic sensors, let's say, that are capable of really investigate and, and capture uh, information related to fire fires. They are, those are satellites, are, some of them are free of charge, so it can be easily downloaded and used. And then, you know, for example, MODIS, uh, we call that uh, they are providing already, you know, on daily basis, you know, a location of uh, forest fires. Mm -hmm. So satellite absolutely this is one of the, of the application of observation in detecting, you know, for your, for your forest fires, you know, around the world. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. We have a question also from Daniel Kersbergen, Kersbergen. A follow up question from him. Uh, who are most of the end users and is there feedback on that? Is there, is there, I guess, is there an opportunity to provide feedback or do you guys solicit feedback on that? Absolutely. This is something that you know, we are now, you know, you know, that, you know now it's been uh, almost more than 15 years that we are. Uh, in, in, in this business, we have uh, since 2003, uh, the, the, you know, uh, the almost graphic mapping services are available. So, but then you know we are now trying to really, uh, you know, look into, um, you know, service oriented, you know, uh, sort of approach. Mm -hmm. So basically, you no know, feedback is little, but in the past we also experienced that uh, you know uh, that uh, in, a, in an emergency situation people are very busy, mm -hmm. so it's not it's not that easy for them you know to provide and say thanks for yes thanks you know they they cost them much, but then you know to provide you know mm -hmm. uh, you know a consistent and then more solid feedback is difficult because everybody is quite busy in, in dealing with emergency. Mm -hmm. So that's why what we have been struggling, struggling, struggling in the past, struggling in the past. But now we have uh, every time there is an activation, we always send, you know, at the end, you know, a questionnaire, um, a user feedback form to all our end users. Then uh, something that is also important to highlight that you know whatever satellite or analysis that is normally provided to humanitarian actors, you know, from the first initial 72 hours, 24 hours, 72 hours, and then throughout the, the images response phase, is also used. And uh, really appreciated by development actors because whatever you know, after the reconstruction and uh, when you know, especially the World Bank after the PDMA, mm -hmm. you know, our damage assessment or you know, whatever analysis produced there by UNOSET is still in this phase, so it can be ingested or so it can be used in the recovery phase, yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah, of course, and I guess that's a good. Uh, Market, if you like, as well. Yeah, to, to yeah, yeah, of course. Then it goes all the different, you know, uh, cycle and phases of the disaster risk management. Yeah. Okay, you mentioned uh, your your conflict team. I think uh, just a minute. We have a, a, a question from Diego. Diego Osorio. We just we just actually trade Diego uh, in Unlek as well. Uh, he's asking, can these satellite images uh, be used for mass atrocities? And, Prevention and monitoring, I guess, and he gives the example of the Janjaweed movement in Sudan a couple of years ago. Yes, this is, uh, you know, this is not, of course, the great imagery has, uh, you know, and then specifically, you know, there's a, a team uh, fully dedicated to this to support uh, human rights, support, you know, the commission of inquiry, mm -hmm. and then, of course, to look at the human rights violation and then try to provide, you know, evidence based. So, this is, uh, you know, we have a uh, you can contact, you know, uh, the, 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 our uh, human security team, and, uh, and then, you know, 
uh, and uh, and ask them all whatever I know. They also are providing this type of service. But then, you know, for the regard to the specific, you know, that you are mentioning, you know, in, in South Sudan, yeah, yeah, South Sudan. in Sudan. Yeah. Yes, I know that we are we are working in South Sudan, and then you know, uh, but you need to contact because sometimes sensitive information is not available, you know, uh, on our website. Yeah. That uh, you know, analysis. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, I guess that that's a whole, uh, whole, almost a whole big topic. If you're going to go uh, in that type of work on, on human rights violations and, and stuff like that. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, another question from uh, from uh, uh, Daniel Fersbergen uh, concerning OSM. Do you collaborate with missing maps? Uh, not for damage assessment, but for rapid mapping. Uh, concerning the same, do you collaborate with missing maps? I don't know. Is there an organization missing maps? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. No. Or is the OSM? No, concerning OSM. Sorry, uh, uh, Daniel, can you reformulate your question? Because I'm not sure if I uh, understood correctly. Collaborate um, with missing maps, not for damage assessment, but for rapid mapping. If you reformulate, I would be happy then to answer you. Thank you. And and and, and send that to uh, actually to Anisha, so that's, that's the one we can use as well. Yeah. I, I have a question, uh, and I, I realize we're running uh, towards the time. Um, I have a question. So because of course you work closely with Map Action, we also work closely with Map Action. So what's the sort of uh, Complementarity and, uh, and collaboration with with map action. Yeah, uh, absolutely, we have uh, you know an, uh, an MOU and now signed uh, with map action, and we've been collaborating uh, since many years now. Map action is offering an incredible and then very important and you know uh, support uh, in the field mm -hmm. uh, whenever you know your uh, team is deployed. So basically, um, we you know that is the, is, the, is not. Uh, in the field, we are well, our yeah. analysis that is not yes. yet. No, no, we are because of course the coordination, mm -hmm. but we don't have the, 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 the capacity because I know that is the reason why we are using the satellite imagery because we have the way of getting information about uh, objects, you know, mm -hmm. from distance, you know. Uh, but anyway, the, the, the thing is that uh, of course we have uh, this, uh, especially with the new uh, with the OCP that we are now defining uh, with, uh, with the UNAC, we. We are providing you know, satellite analysis analysis to the UNDA team and it's also to map action in the format in the special you know in the format of JS ready to use data that the map action can definitely um, you know compile and then combine with other um, information in the field and then provide edit mm -hmm. So basically uh, it's, uh, it's uh, the collaboration is there and then you know whatever type of satellite image analysis or the right products can be then ingested in any other uh, sort of um, exercise or any sort of, they can be used for any, any other type of analysis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, we have, I think we have clarification from Daniel now. From Daniel, um, besides the knowledge assessment and rapid response, does unit uh, UNOSAT provide info on preventive mass risk? Preventive mass uh, Ah, risk assessment. Yeah. Right. Yes, this is not part, you know, of course, uh, we do. Um, uh, you know, that is not only, it's, uh, it's, you know, rapid mapping is service, you know, within, within, you know, it's part of the UNOSAT, but then UNOSAT has also other, you know, uh, activities and um, and then also projects that we are, we are, we are working in and then contributing to. Um, when it comes into preparedness, sort of, it's not part of the rapid mapping, uh, that is, um, it's more, Project based, let's say, but we actually do provide some some interesting work in uh, in uh, in uh, preparedness and especially in uh, you know like flood modeling or um, risk assessment. Mm. So so we do, but it's not part of the, the rapid mapping, let's say, as well, because rapid mapping needs to be needs to be fast. <laughs> Okay, we have one last question, which is uh, timely because uh, we've got uh, five minutes, which is uh, from Daniel Grassberg as well. It's uh, on our screen here. So, question is: uh, Missing Maps is a, an initiative from Médecins Sans Frontières, as an addition to OpenStreetMap. Ah, that was the abbreviation OSM. 
It is a collaboration with different Red Cross societies. This initiative allows volunteers around the world to map remotely automatically devised tasks and allows for quick voluntary mapping. I guess, are you involved now? Yeah, we're not, we're not involved in this specific initiative, but I remember that myself and also other, other colleagues, you know, we got involved at the very beginning, you know, and now we have, uh, you know, the Google Maps and then, you know, Google Earth that is providing, you know, a lot of information, press and stuff. But this was done, you know, remember, if I recall correctly, like six or seven years ago by, you know, what is called the Google Map Maker community. It was a bunch of volunteers and they are the one that initiated providing all this information on the, on uh, that were then used and displayed on Google Earth and uh, Google Maps. Yeah. So I think that all these initiatives are really, um, you know, welcome and then uh, absolutely appreciated, you know, because they are providing, uh, you know, good uh, information, data that can be used and ingested for um, operations and to provide any sort of transmission uh, information management support. So, mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to learn a bit more, but then, you know, I would like also to know whether you know, can, can, can contribute or can, or can support, but then we are absolutely, um, you know, open uh, and uh, happy that there are, you know, people engaging and then uh, uh, really motivated to provide, you know, support on this. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so then we have a dialogue already. <laughs> which is good. Great. Okay. Um, uh, we have to uh, leave it uh, here. Uh, we're almost an hour into this Sunday talk. So thank you all for your participation uh, in the audience. Uh, some really good questions. Uh, for those of you who are unable to ask your questions uh, and view this episode live, uh, we will post this, uh, this video on Facebook. Uh, Unlock Talks Facebook page and as well as uh, YouTube. On the Unlock Talks Facebook page, you can then post questions and we will answer them and get in touch with Luca. Um, again, we have been in conversation with Luca Deloro, the acting head of the training and capacity development and operational disaster mapping teams of UNITARS. Satellite <laughs> Applications Program, aka UNICEF. Luca, thanks a lot. It was great. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you next time, I think, with Unlock Talks, which will be about environmental emergencies, if I'm not wrong. Um, it, is, it is, that is actually right, because the next topic uh, on Unlock Talks will be about disaster waste management with Leif Jansson from Sweden and Emilia Wallström from Finland and Ocha. Uh, again, this episode will take place by a webinar on September the 5th. So thank you so much for your time and uh, for your interest, and we hope to see you all again soon. Thank you, Peter, thank you. and thank you very much for your attention. And I will be happy to get in touch and then, you know, to continue this discussion, you know, in uh, on Facebook or you know, whatever. Bye bye.